Hey everybody, welcome back to Jim's Garage. In this video, we're gonna be continuing the Ansible journey and by the end of this video, you'll be able to automate the deployment of Docker and spin up containers automatically as well. In this example, I'll be choosing Portainer. This is a great thing to learn because we're not only going to be looking at roles and templates, but it's also going to give you the opportunity to be able to spin up new infrastructure, i.e. a new Docker install, perhaps you're improving your home lab, you're buying new equipment, or maybe there's been a disaster and you need to rebuild, all of those sorts of things. Let's jump into VS Code and let's start learning. So as we continue our journey into Ansible, we're building up the complexity and learning new features. And this feels like the perfect opportunity to introduce roles and templates. What are they? Well, in the previous video, we pretty much had everything in a single file. If you remember, we had the copy playbook and that copy playbook basically did everything in one long list. So it was doing things like copying files, then installing Docker, spinning up the container, all those sorts of things. Now, anyone who's dabbled in programming before knows about the notion of things like object-oriented programming, where you create objects and classes and all those sorts of things to break up your code and basically make it more manageable. That's pretty much what roles are doing within Ansible. So instead of having all of the elements within the one main script, what we actually do is we break it up into roles and then we call those roles as and when we're required. Also in this video, I'm gonna introduce templates. Templates are basically a way to pre-configure an application. Say for example, you want to deploy a web server or you want to install an SSH agent. Typically those will come with some default settings that aren't necessarily correct for what you want it for, i.e. there might be some settings that you want enabled by default. Templates allow you to do that because you can set the configuration file, copy it over, and then spin up the container in this case, and it will use those new working, i.e. what you're expecting, those configuration parameters. Let's walk through this example of spinning up Docker and deploying Portainer to understand that process. So the first thing we need to do is to look at the folder hierarchy and understand what's going on here. So in the previous example, you can see on the left, I had a folder and within that folder, I basically had the playbooks, the hosts, the variables and the inventory and password, all those sorts of things. Basically, everything was in the same folder. And that's not a good idea because it makes things messy. We want to compartmentalize things, put things into roles, put things into a standard format. And that's what we're doing here. So I've created a new folder just for this demonstration. I've called it Ansible Docker Portainer. And within that folder, basically there's three things. There's the playbook. And if we click on the playbook, you'll see all this does is install Docker on Ubuntu. And it actually does do a Portainer deploy. You can actually see here, much like in my previous video where we referenced variable files, in this case, we are referencing roles. And if we go back to the left here, you can actually see that the roles is a folder. And within that roles folder, we've got different things. So you can see that there's the Docker install, which is this one here, that's that role. And we've also got the Portainer deploy, which is this role here. So let's have a look through the Docker install and then we'll do the Portainer deploy and then we'll go through all of the files in turn. So the Docker install format basically has handlers, tasks, templates, and variables. And this is the same within the other folder as well. So the key thing where most stuff happens, certainly in this case, not always the case, is in the tasks folder. So the tasks has the main.yaml. And this will look familiar because it's a little bit like what we had in the last video. So this is the one where it has all of those tasks. We'll go through this in a minute, but I just wanna talk about the folder structure first. Now, these roles will often refer to variables and other things within here, so handlers, for example. And you'll find handlers in here. So for example, here's a handler. That will basically handle a state within the playbook. The templates, like I mentioned before, these are for pre-configurations. So in this example here, you can see that I'm setting the storage driver to whatever the storage driver is set to, and that's in this variables folder here. And within this main.yaml, you'll see all of the variables for this playbook. 
And for that specific example, you'll see it's set to overlay two, which is pretty much the default for Docker, but there are additional options you can choose. You can also within here set the variables for the different versions of Docker that you want to install. This is obviously really useful and for when we get onto things like Docker Swarm and Kubernetes coming soon, we'll be able to specify all of our variables within this one single file and that makes management much easier. We don't have to go through each respective file, playbook, whatever, and change them. We can change them all in one place, safe in the knowledge that the playbook will reference these and pick up these variables. Now the Portano one is pretty much just the same. So this handler is just making sure that it's present. We've got some tasks in here, which is to actually go and create all of the folders, much like we did in the last video for Nginx and the web deployment. And then we've got a template here, which is actually just a Docker Compose file. So yeah, that is basically a configuration file. And then we've got some variables in here. This is very simplistic. It's just saying which version of Portana do you want? So let's go through it in True Dreams Garage style. Let's go through each page now. So we're going to start off with the Docker install because naturally we'd want to install Docker first before we installed Portana. We wouldn't be able to do it. And we can actually see that in this playbook here. We can see that the Docker install role comes before the Portana deploy. So make sure you do things in the right order. The key thing here as well is with this playbook I'm giving you, I'm showing you how to install Portana on this. But basically any of my Docker Compose files, any of the containers you want, you essentially just replicate this folder structure and add additional roles. So you could add a role here for PyHole deploy or Nginx deploy, traffic deploy, whatever it is that you're using. And you would just follow this process through and fingers crossed, everything goes right. You've configured it correctly. You'd be able to automate the deployment of all of your containers. So with the playbook out of the way, let's go into the roles, which is called here. So Docker install. I'm going to go through first the task of main.yaml because this is basically the thing that it runs and it references the other folders here. So if we open up the main.yaml, let's have a look what's going on. So basically this first part here is downloading the dependencies for the Docker install. And if you've ever installed Docker manually, you'll know that you need to download and have these present on your machine. So that's basically what it's doing. It's using the built-in FQCN. It's iterating through this loop here with each item. And then it's just saying, hey, is this item present? So hopefully this should be a little bit more flexible depending on your OS. So I'm running this on Ubuntu 2304. I did actually run this on 2404, which is the most recent LTS just come out. But as a lot of people are saying at the moment um, there's some issues ubuntu tend to just ship things because it's the date i.e it's a year on we need to push it out whereas mm, it's probably not ready for the mainstream so i don't always agree with upgrading to the latest lts i would let that bake in a little bit before you migrate as i said this doesn't work on 2404 certainly how i've got it set up but anything before 2404 i was able to get it working first time after that, we're moving on through the Docker installation, which is basically the exact same steps that are on the Docker website. However, this is just written into an Ansible format. So we're going to add the GPG key. We're going to make sure that we download it and it's present. It's calling the APT key, so it's going to add that key. It's then going to add the Docker repository. And if you remember from the previous video, here we are calling a variable. So if we actually now open up the vars, because this is the first time we've used it, let's click on the main in the variables folder and let's look for Docker apt repository. So here you'll see Docker apt repository and is pulling down the latest version of the Ansible for Ubuntu. You can see that here. You'll see that it's pulling down the stable version and obviously you could change this to whatever version you want and hopefully the playbook should just pick that up and should roll with it. After it's done that, it's going to actually do the install. So it's going to install the Docker CE, the community edition, and make sure the state of that install is present. So it's calling the FQCN of APT and waiting. And it's also then updating the cache afterwards. After that, it's then going to configure Docker by copying across a configuration file. In this case, it's the template that we have over here. So you can see here it's using the Ansible FQCN template. 
it's saying the source of the file is the daemon json.j2. And then if we actually look on templates, we can see that here. So all we're doing on here is setting the storage driver. Then back in the tasks, we're copying that over to our remote machine. So this is the machine that is in your inventory or machines, depending on how many you want to replicate this to. As I said, I've spun up a new virtual machine for this, just running 2304. Basically anything under 24 is working for me. It's going to copy this file, so this JSON file, over to etc docker daemon.json, which is where the Docker configuration file sits. We've set an owner and a group because I'm running Docker as a root, and I've set a file access mode, and I've also notified to restart Docker. So once it's installed, it's just going to restart it to make sure that everything is working as expected. And now this notify here, will take you to this handler here. So this handler is essentially listening for something to happen, for a state to become true, and it's then gonna wait for the built-in system MD, it's gonna wait for Docker to be restarted. Once Docker's restarted, it's then gonna carry on, and it's gonna make sure after it's restarted that Docker is up and running. So it's using system MD again, it's looking for Docker, it's saying enable true and the state is started. So obviously we want to make sure that Docker is up and running before we move on to the next one. And then if we go back here to the playbook, you'll see that we then call portainer deploy. So I'll shrink this one down and we'll look at this next one. Again, this is just within the roles subdirectory. Again here, we'll click on the main and we'll go through this. This is very similar to the last video where I set up Nginx. It's basically copying the exact same steps. So we're gonna use the built-in package for Docker Compose, and we're gonna check that Docker Compose is installed on this machine because I'm deploying Portainer using a Docker Compose file. We're gonna again check that the Docker service is running. Strictly, you probably don't need that because it's all gonna be running in the same playbook, but I just wanted to put this in here in case you are copying this over to different machines or you just wanted to see what that would look like. Next, we're going to set up the Portainer directory. Now, this is the directory for the Docker Compose file. Now, as you've seen with all of my videos, I have a defined structure for where I put my Docker Compose files. I basically put them in their respective app, so it will be Portainer slash, and then there'll be a Docker Compose.yaml. That's basically replicating this, so feel free to tweak this to whatever you want. But we're using the FQCN of built-in file. We are creating a path for this to go into, and first we need to create a directory. So this is basically setting up that directory first in this location, and then the next bit is actually this template. This is where it's copying the template, i.e. the Docker Compose, to this location. And so if we click here, you will see that it's templates, Docker Compose. If we go to templates here, you'll see that Docker Compose, and it's exactly that. This is literally a Docker Compose file to set up Portainer. Once we've got that, we're going to put it over in the home of Ubuntu Docker Compose Portainer Docker Compose .yaml. This is what I was just talking about up here. I put my Docker Compose files in this file format. You can obviously choose wherever you want to put them. It expects some permissions, so this Docker Compose file is just going to be owned by the home user, and that can be called. And then again, we're going to be calling a notify. So this is a notify to start Portainer. So hopefully by now you'll know that that's in the handler because it's waiting to handle something. And it's going to say that make sure that that is present. So it's basically checking that the copy of the file went over. Once it's done that, we're then actually going to start the container. And this is exactly the same as what we used to spin up Nginx in the last video. It's calling the community docker fqcn for docker compose. And it's calling this file here, which is basically this one here. So you don't actually need to put in the docker compose yaml. It will just look for any docker compose yaml within this folder, which is there and it's going to make sure that the state of present is satisfied, i.e. it's running. So hopefully all of that makes sense. So let's now jump into the terminal and let's see if this can get running. So now I'm on the terminal on my Ansible machine. I'm going to CD to this one here, Ansible Docker Portainer. And now I only need to run the following command. 
Now this command is pretty simplistic. I'm just running Ansible playbook, playbook.yaml. That's the one I've got over here. If we look down there, it's this one here. I'm specifying the inventory file. Again, it's relative because within this, I'm in this folder structure. And I'm also specifying the key file. Now, this is a little bit different from the one previously, just because previously we generated our own key, and that was up here. That was that ansible.pub key and ansible key here. And we copied those over to that machine. This time I chose to just deploy this using a cloud init in Proxmox. And because of that, I'm actually using the cloud init key that I generated for that, so a different key. And I've simply added that over here to the IDRSA, and that's the one I'm doing here. Doesn't really matter which one you use, just repeat the same process from the previous video, or repeat the process that I've showed before in my cloud init video. And if you're wondering what that looks like, here is the Ansible Docker test that I spun up for this video. And then on the cloud init tab, you can see I've added this SSH key in here and you can just copy this into your Ansible machine, the one that you're gonna connect to when you're running the playbook and make sure this is here. And then you'll have a much easier time with not having to specify lots of different things. So with all of that explained, let's now run this command and let's see what happens. So it's now going away and running that playbook. It's gathering the facts on the host, that Docker01. It's basically going out and checking what's the current state of the machine. Now, good job that we did check for those uh, dependencies because it looks like the app to transport HTTPS wasn't installed, so it's gone and done that. It's then added the GPG key and it's created that Docker repository and it's now moving on to install Docker CE. Because of my rubbish internet, this is going to take a while. But thankfully, in a few days, that's all going to be fixed. And I've got a ton of cool videos coming out on that. So now that's completed, it's now configuring the Docker daemon options. That was that JSON file. It's now installed Docker and made sure it's running. It's now copied the compose over. It's set up the Docker port. It's set up the Portainer directory. It's deployed Portainer. And now it's running that Docker compose up. So in the background, this should now be pulling down the Docker container from the internet and fingers crossed, it should be starting up that container. Now, nothing failed on that. So all being well, we should be able to now go to the IP address and port 9000, which was in that Docker compose file, if we remind ourselves here, port 9000. So let's now navigate to this IP on this machine, which is the one that's in my inventory file this one here and with any luck we should be able to get into Portainer. So let's hit return and let's see what happens. Bingo, we've now got Portainer installed automatically through Ansible on a Docker installation that we also automated. So thanks for watching everybody. Hopefully that gave you an understanding as to what roles are for, i.e. breaking up your playbooks into manageable chunks things that you can actually then debug at a granular level or new features that you could add to existing larger playbooks. We also looked at templates, which helps you to pre-configure your applications and set states and deployments, etc., so that when you deploy an application, it's going to behave and be configured into something that's going to work in your environment. Now we've pretty much got all of the basics out of the way for Ansible and we're ready to start building something more exciting. So I'll either do Docker Swarm or jump straight into Kubernetes. I'll do both at some point, but that's where we're going to be heading now. As always, if you've got any questions or comments or recommendation, put those down below. All of this documentation will be linked on my GitHub, so please do check it out. And jump on the Discord if you've got any issues or just want to chat more generally. We've got a big group of people on there now that are all helping each other out. As always, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.